Now let us proceed back to the slides. Okay, first of all what we are going to learn that how actually the packets of the wireless network work. Because in this webinar I'll be starting from the very basics that you don't know about anything of the wireless headers and these things. So we will start from that. So wireless packets can be divided into the three types. That is a management packet, control packet and a data packet also. So to understand these packets what we are going to do we are simply going to capture some packets over the wireless. We are going, we are running our Wireshark which is already pre-configured in the backtrack. Okay, we are going to capture an interface on a MUN0. So we can capture this in this way. Just to save our time, I have already captured some of the packets out here. I have already got a folder name packet. Just to save our time, but you can also do that. So first of all, let us understand beacons. And let me just up my Wireshark loading these packets. So here is our variety of beacon frames that are being out here. So let us first understand how these actually packet look like and what are inbuilt in, in between these packets. So first of all let us have this IEEE protocol version. So first of all it says that the type and subtype is a beacon same. As I told earlier it is a broadcast packet so anyone can capture this. Then we have got a frame control header and you can also see this in our presentation also that these are the MAC frames and these are all the things out here. But actually in taking explaining all these things in a slide I thought why not to have a practical session. Then the duration. Then we've got a destination address. The destination address is simply being filled out with all F's out here that is the highest value that you can set in, an, in this. So it is a broadcast. It, being, it is being broadcasted. The source address, it is the source hardware address. You can say a BSS ID as well also. Then we have got a, here the same BSS ID. Then we have got a fragment number. What is the fragment? Then we have got a sequence number and FCS. Uh, all the things which are out here mentioned as a frame body FCS, you can all visit out here that each and every packet is out here. Apart from this, let us also discuss the frame control. Frame control is actually a monster packet and it contains a lots of information in it. Like in the frame control, we have got a version 0. That is simply when the version of this 8.2.11 will change, it will set this bit as 7 and it is not previously compatible. Then it shows that beacon frame is the management packet. Its subtype is 8 and then we have got a variety of flags out here. Let us discuss some of them. So first of all is DS status that is it leaving the distribution system or it is entering into a distribution system. This flag denotes that. Then we have got a more fragment flag that sometimes what happens actually that the packet is quite a big in size. So actually what our access point does, it breaks out the packet into some fragments and then the packets travel. So it says this is the last fragment, this packet was not being broken. Then we have got a retry. Retry is kind of an important thing out here that one can easily say that sometimes packet got lost over the network as wireless is such a losing medium and it lost so many of packets. Then what access point actually did, it just retransmit that packet so that it just reaches out. So here we have got a frame is not being retransmitted and if it is power management packet or not then we have got a more data that after this packet is there some data being associated with the similar packet and it says no, no data is in the buffer. Then we have got a protected flag. Is this packet is being protected? Of course it is a 
a broadcast packet that is a beacon frame and there is no such hard need to protect it and order flag is the data is in strict order or not. So this was all about the frame control and another important thing we have got in the wireless LAN management packet. We have got a lots of information in that as well. First of all, it is being divided into two parts, that is a fixed and a tagged parameter. Fixed, we have got a timestamp out here. We have got a beacon interface, interval, capability information that the transmitter is an AP access point and a bunch of other packets are also there that what channel it is using and is it a delay block packet or something else. So lots of juicy information out here. Then they've got a tag parameter that the SSID name is the Ashutosh. It can support these kind of data rates and it also shows that the current working channel is 1. ERP information, supported rate and a bunch of variety of other things. So this is how the packet study goes on when we deal with the wireless. Let us quickly come back to the slides. So this is all the thing we have discussed. That is a Mac frame. I have taken this slide directly from this URL, so acknowledgement to that also. And we have seen all these things like frame control, duration ID, and all a bunch of other things in this slide. Now what we learned so far, that we have got some points so far, that is, everything was in clean, plain text. Uh, we have seen that there was no such security mechanism or some encryption type out here that can uh, encrypt these kind of data or something. So a whole punchline is that that everything was in the plain text. So if I know all the fields and headers part out in the in the beacon frames, I can also broadcast some of the beacon frames easily by making a simple program. And I can say one can easily inject packets over the raw socket. So what practically we can done by learning all these things. So let me just quickly go back out here. And let me show you first that these are only the network which are being associated right now. And what we can do that, we can use a simple utility MDK3 that is already out there with the MON0. Uh, first of all, let me show you what is this MDK. You can read about this. A uh, variety of options and all these things are there. And it shows that beacon flood mode. So already utility is out with us. So we have got MDK with an option. First of all, the interface. Then we have got the high B option, which we have already seen in above, that it can flood the beacon frames. And with a hyphen N option, I can give any name to that beacon frames. So let me say, let me give that as a tag gig. And now you can see it is broadcasting out the packet with some fake, matter, fake MAC address that is also being changing frequently. And if I open just that thing, now the scroll bar has come and I can see a tag gig interface. And somebody who is trying to connect might get into a lots of trouble because this is actually not a real network. So kind of a troublesome thing out here that somebody seeking out for having a free access to the internet can get into a lots of trouble. So one can also inject a variety of exploits or some things via the raw socket and we will discuss this thing in a bit later also. That is the recent vulnerability that is being found in the WPA2 encryption. So apart from this let us move to our slides and presentation also. So now it's time we have seen that how the broadcast and the beacon frames and all a bunch of other things works. Now let us try to understand how actually a client get connected to the access point. So here we have got our station and here we have got our access point. So first of all what happens access point just broadcast some of the beacon frames to the station that yes I am here present in the vicinity and you can try to connect with me. Similarly the wireless clients such as your smartphones or your laptops 
get try to connect by sending a probe request to the access point. In return to that request, access point sends you back some of the probe response that yes, your request is being granted and I am sending a response to it. After that, the wireless client sends an authentication request that if it is an open authentication or WEP or WPA encryption, whatever it is, authenticate me to that. After the successful authentication, it just sends an authentication response that yes, you have successfully connected to our uh, network that is a free network without encryption or with encryption, we have got connected to that. Uh, after that, the client sends an association request that yes, I have got associated with you and finally, it sends back an association response that okay, you have got associated with our access point, now you can send any data packet to the internet or you can receive any data packet from the internet or the network as well. After that, a uh, data packet travels to and from the internet and after the data packet has gone out, there we have finally we have got a deauth request that yes, I am switching off my wireless interface and now I can simply, I am simply disconnecting it by sending a deauth request saying that please uh, deauth me. So this was all about understanding the connection. Now the probe request, you can also monitor a variety of probe requests also. So we have got a probe folder as well also for just for the sake of saving the time and we, I have already captured these and I can see that probe request packet. So I have got a bunch of beacon frame as well also. Uh, let me just quickly make a filter to have the so we have got a beacon frame. I don't need any beacon frame, so I can apply a filter as not selected. Then the ribbon, what I have got out here is a, my Apple client. I have tried to connect my Apple ID. So here it is the probe request. And if we scroll down, we have got some acknowledgement also. Uh, we can also read about these probe requests and all these packets just by using a Wireshark and we can capture any of the packets out here. So this is how actually the probe requesting goes on. Okay, let's come back to this. That so now the things comes to the very practical aspect that some of the internet papers or some of the 